OK, so we're going to have a look at a cute little connection between the binomial distribution and the binomial expansion. So we just start off, just to recap, what is the binomial distribution? Well, say if x, your random variable, has a binomial distribution with, say, n equals 3 and probability p of success. You can just sort of think of this as having three trials as a probability p of success, and then x is counting up your total number of successes you've had. So, for example, if you wanted to work out what's the probability of three successes in a row, it's just p times p times p, p cubed. Then you can also work out the probability of having two successes. There's three ways of doing this. 3 times p squared, 1 minus p. There's your probability of one success. And then your probability of no successes, so three failures in a row, 1 minus p cubed. And things get interesting when we start to compare this now to a very specially chosen binomial expansion, which is p plus 1 minus p, all cubed. So never mind the fact that this is actually just equal to 1. If we expand this, we get p cubed plus 3p squared, 1 minus p, plus 3p, 1 minus p squared, plus a 1 minus p, all cubed. And hopefully you've spotted here that all of your terms in the binomial expansion are your binomial probabilities. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to have a look at kind of what's going on here, why are these two things connected, and have a deeper look at that sort of structure. So hopefully it'll help you improve your understanding of both binomial distributions and the binomial expansion. So just the more general picture here is if you've got binomial distribution with n trials, probability p of success, Here's your formula, just the probability mass function is n choose k, p to the k, 1 minus p, n minus k. And then we can compare this with p plus 1 minus p all to the power of n now. And you know that this binomial expansion is going to be the sum from k equals 0 to n of n choose k, p to the k, 1 minus p to the n minus k. And you can spot here that all of the terms in your sum, all of these are just sort of the binomial probabilities from your probability mass function above. So just before we get to look at the real sort of deep structure underneath this, I'll show you something cool that you can do using this result. So we're going to show that the sum of probabilities of your binomial distribution is equal to 1. So if you just start off with 1, you know that 1 is equal to 1 to the power of n. You've not done anything too special there. And then if we're clever, we rewrite 1 as p plus 1 minus p. So this is still equal to 1 to the power of n. And then hopefully you can see now what we're going to do next is going to write this as actually the binomial expansion of this. And then what we can spot here is that each of the terms in our sum, n choose k, p to the k, 1 minus p to the n minus k, well this is just the probability that our binomial random variable x is equal to k. So there you go, just really simple. You've started off with 1, written it in a fancy way, and then shown that this is a binomial expansion. You've been able to show it's really elegant, really simple, really short. You can prove that the sum of binomial probabilities is indeed equal to 1. So what we'll do now is we'll have a look at this sort of deep structure with going back to the n equals 3 example. So remember that when n equals 3, we're basically looking at flipping a coin three times and counting the number of times that you get heads, for example, if p is the probability of getting heads. So you could draw a probability tree like this just to sort of keep track of everything that's going on. So this is kind of your underlying structure behind the binomial distribution. It's always successive trials, fixed probability of success, and you're counting up the number of successes in total. And then the sort of corresponding structure for the binomial expansion is going to be this p plus 1 minus p cubed. And then this is really just p plus 1 minus p multiplied by itself three times. And of course, when you expand this, you get all of your nice binomial probabilities there at the bottom. So now let's have a look at the probability x equals 3 is equal to p cubed. Where does this actually come from? Well, this is saying you get three successes, so three heads in a row. So where does that figure of p cubed come from? Well, there's a probability p of getting heads the first time, then multiply that by another p, and then multiply that by another p, which gives you your p cubed probability of getting three successes in a row. And if we have a look at the bottom, where does this p cubed term in the bottom expansion come from? Well, this comes from multiplying this p by this p by this p. And there's only one way of doing that, so you just have 1 times p cubed. This gives you your p cubed term at the bottom. So next, a little bit more interesting, let's have a look at the probability of two heads and one tail. So there's three different ways you can do this. You can get heads, heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, or tails, heads, heads. So this is sort of explaining where our coefficient of 3 comes from. But then if you look along any of these branches, say the first one, you've got p times p times 1 minus p. So this explains sort of where you're getting your p squared 1 minus p term from. And then you've also here got two p's and a 1 minus p, just in a slightly different order. And the same again for your third choice. So they're all sort of the same probability, we're just doing the multiplication in a different order. 
So now we'll have a look at the sort of corresponding structure underneath for the binomial expansion. So where has this 3p squared 1 minus p term come from? Well, how do you get a p squared term and a 1 minus p? You've got to multiply two p's together and a 1 minus p. So you can multiply your first two p's and finally a 1 minus p together. And this sort of corresponds to your heads, heads, tails scenario, where you take two p's to begin with and then one 1 minus p at the end. But there's another way you can get p squared 1 minus p. You could have p and then 1 minus p and then p again. And this sort of corresponds to your heads, tails, heads scenario in the probability tree. So you can see it's this same sort of underlying structure of choosing things in different orders, which gives you your binomial coefficients. And finally here, you've got 1 minus p times p times p. This corresponds to our tails, heads, heads scenario on the probability tree. So just to recap here, you've got three different ways of getting two heads out of a total of three. You can have your heads, heads, tails, and this sort of corresponds to multiplying p by p by 1 minus p. And then you've got another two different ways you can do this, and these sort of correspond to your different ways of multiplying together the p's and 1 minus p's in your binomial expansion at the bottom.